you are going to want to hear the latest round of people speaking out against the Barnetts, and we're going to talk about some of the highlights of it in today's video. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa, which is still behind me. And today, Roscoe P. Coltrane, our mascot, he is the little doggy there on the black blanket. He is camouflaged into it, and he is with us today. And my name is Paul. Now, as you heard in my little intro in the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about a couple of things to do with the case of Natalia Grace. Uh, this is stemming from the recent docu-series that came out, uh, The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Uh, if you followed that, then you already know this has been just a twisty and turny case. And not even if you just watched the docu-series, but if you followed it over the years. Now, this video is not meant to be like some deep dive into the case or anything like that. I made a couple of other videos and about all of YouTube has at this point too. So if you want all that kind of information, just go watch the other videos that are down in the description uh, but specifically for today what we're going to talk about is this first of all we're going to visit some statements that have come out and people being like uh what are the Barnett's talking about right um and one of them I mean they've been like the previous adoptive family I mean this was a while ago that they spoke out right um but also the adoption agency that the Barnett's were claiming that they got Natalia from has come out being like um hello this isn't true and so that has left me with a lot of questions so those are the two things I want to review and the way we will review those things is through some video clips uh, and mostly just that so let's go ahead and start by first of all refreshing everybody's memory on what the father Michael said like his story as to how they were able to adopt Natalia Grace he regrets not realizing something was wrong when the adoption agency first contacted the couple they sought us out we did not contact them they gave us very little information on Natalia, and they told us, you've got 24 hours to make a decision on if you want to adopt this special needs person. you got 24 hours. We're not giving you any information. It's a closed adoption. Now, on the surface level, this sounds completely sketchy, right? In regard to, oh my gosh, this poor child, why would they do that? But then if you, again, listen to it on service level, it's like, this doesn't make sense. Like, what, what is up with this? Now, he would also say that when he went there to the agency, that, first of all, oh my God, it's this horrible looking place. You know, we didn't even think it was the right place. And that the former adoptive, you know, people who had her before were like, flew in, dropped her off in another room, and then turned around and left. And then an hour later, Natalia Grace comes running in. So keep that in mind because we're going to hear from them in a little bit. But before we get to that, what I want to do is look at the statement that the adoption agency put out. Because again, listening to this, I was just like, why? Like, what is going on? This is a lot of red flags. Obviously, something was taking place here. But now that the adoption agency has come out and saying this, I'm like, okay, so where do we go from here? Now, I'm going to put these up on the screen and you can pause to read or you can listen to me read through it. Uh, and I'm going to read the whole statement by them because it is worth reading the whole thing. So let's go ahead and start. So adoption by Shepherd Care sets the record straight on recent misinformation surrounding Natalia Grace's adoption. Hollywood, Florida, Adoption by Shepherd Care is issuing this press release to address recent false statements made by Michael Barnett regarding the adoption of Natalia Grace. It has come to our attention that Mr. Barnett provided inaccurate information to the media regarding Adoption by Shepherd Care, ASC, and the completion of Natalia's adoption. We would like to clarify the facts surrounding this matter. Contrary to Mr. Barnett's claims, ASC did not initiate any communication or contact with Mr. and Ms. Barnett regarding Natalia's adoption. Now we're going to revisit this part because it's highlighted here, okay? But remember how he said they researched him? We're going to come back to this, but just let's finish this paragraph. The adoption process for Natalia was carried out by a court in New Hampshire where the original adoptive family resided. ASC was not involved in any capacity, nor were they a party to the placement of Natalia. Now let's pause right there before we continue. 
Okay, because a couple of things. Like at first, when you're reading this, you're like, "Oh, they're trying to get tricky and say, you know, we didn't reach out to them." But then they're like, "Look, we had nothing to do with this, right?" Now, one reason that he said the whole thing of they reached out to us, and this is for people who might be new to this, is the Barnetts were kind of well known. They had this foundation. They had a special needs daycare, and so they were kind of known in that. So he's like, "They reached out to us. They had researched us, like basically like saying like y'all are the perfect people." Now I have a couple of thoughts on that. So after watching how he operates, Michael Barnett, now remember, we haven't heard that much from the mother and all this, right? The form, you know, uh, uh, Christine Barnett, not the current mother. Um, but the way he operates, I'm like, that just sounds to me, if we don't believe what he's saying, which I don't believe much of what he's saying, it's almost like another, you know, supply, like, oh, they researched us, they reached out to us. Because to the normal brain, like my, I'm thinking this, I'm like, why would you lie about that, right? Like, why would you make that up? Well, somebody who gets this kind of like, and I don't know if it's like narcissistic supply or ego stroke or whatever you call it. Um, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a professional, right? I'm not credentialed in any of that stuff, but that's just what it seems like. Like, again, if you go the value of he's making all this up. Uh, so when they said, like, we didn't reach out, you know, we didn't initiate anything here, like, none of that. Um, and then to follow up with, we didn't do any of that. This is up in New Hampshire. And that is where the other couple was at. Uh, so I find that interesting. Let's keep reading the statement. While we respect and appreciate the work of other adoption agencies and entities involved in the process, it is essential to acknowledge the correct individuals and organizations responsible for Natalia's adoption. At Adoption by Shepherd Care, our commitment is to provide safe and loving homes for children in need. We uphold the highest standards of professionalism, ethical conduct, and empathy throughout the adoption journey. Our mission is centered around the well-being and happiness of the children and families we serve. In response to the false statements made by Mr. Barnett, Adoption by Shepherd Care finds itself in the regrettable position of pursuing legal action. We firmly believe in the importance of protecting our reputation and ensuring that accurate information is shared with the public. While it is unfortunate to have to take this step, it is necessary to protect the integrity and trust we have established over the years. We kindly request that the media and public refrain from further disseminating the false information presented by Mr. Barnett. We understand the curiosity surrounding this adoption case, but we also urge respect for the privacy of all parties involved. Adoption processes can be sensitive and emotionally charged. It is our duty to ensure that the children and families entrusted to our care are treated with compassion and dignity. Adoption by Shepherd Care will continue its unwavering commitment to finding love, loving, and permanent placements for children. Guided by the principles of honesty, compassion, and respect, we remain dedicated to supporting families and creating a brighter future for every child we serve. Okay, so I'm very curious to see because then this leaves me. Well, then how did I mean? Where, did he literally just make this whole thing up about going to this place in Florida? They were in. We know they were in Florida. They went to Disney. They did all this. So it's like why like why would you make that up and i'm not trying to sit here and say that this adoption agency is lying but it's like another layer and so i'm like okay well did the place up in new hampshire do all this and then they coordinated and they met at this place or is he literally making the entire thing up because that is a whole new level of like absurdity right but again could i see him completely making it up yes i have no doubt the fact that this agency is coming out and saying um hello like none of this happened right why would they lie i mean of course you can say well they're trying to hold you know their reputation and this and that and blah, 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 blah. you know but i mean this would be very easily provable right if they're going to go the legal route it would be very easy to be like um hello this went down in this way i would think if you know differently, by George, drop it in the comment section, okay? Because this has my head spinning. But so does the other part to this. So again, Natalia came from, you know, another couple, right? So according to Michael Barnett, let's watch an Inside Edition interview with said couple, some clips of it, and also look at some of the pictures in this because this had me going, oh, wait a second we didn't see all this before 
You know what I'm saying? So let's watch that. I'll, I'll show a clip and make some commentary and then we'll reconvene at the end. Vincent and Nicole DePaul live with dwarfism just like Natalia. They tried to adopt the Ukrainian born orphan in 2009 before she was given to another family, Michael and Christine Barnett. Natalia stayed with the family at their home in this neighborhood outside Albany, New York for multiple long weekends to see if she was a good fit. The DePaul showed me stacks of adoption paperwork that lists Natalia's official birth date. Date of birth, 9-4-2003. Mm -hmm. According to this, she's 16 she's years 16. old today. There are people out there who think she's 30. That's ridiculous. I'd say that's ridiculous. Okay, so... Here's this, they have all these documents. Now we're gonna watch some other stuff from this interview or whatever, but one thing I wanted to do with this is just talk about it for a second. So here's the couple they had her on the weekends. You know, they also have uh, some situation, they're little people. So first of all, they're gonna have a perspective that a lot of like, the general public doesn't, right? Um, of number one, her strength, which we'll hear about for some of the claims that the Barnetts were making um, and that type of stuff. But first of all, let's pause for a second on this picture that they showed. And I'm going to put up on the screen. Okay, look at this photograph. This is clearly a child, right? This is a young version here. Now, they're going to get even deeper into it with the teeth and stuff like that, her having baby teeth. But when I look at this picture, I'm like, oh, yeah, hands down, I would not question that this is a child. So on that note, let's keep going and watch the next clip. When I spoke to Michael Barnett, he was pretty certain that Natalia is actually an adult masquerading as a child. What do you have to say about that? When I heard that, I was shocked. I mean, she looks like a child, she acts like a child. Did you ever think, she might not be a six-year-old, she might be an adult? Never. <laughs> Never. Alrighty. This makes me, I mean, it literally gives me goosebumps because I'm like this. I'm like, literally, with the Barnetts, I'm like, y'all, what if they made all of this up? Like, a hundred percent. Here's the thing, we saw the docu-series, right? We saw the behavior from the Barnetts, from Michael specifically. One doesn't want to think, and you would think at this point, and, and look at these cases, that I would get over this or not think this way, right? That a human being would not make stuff up to this degree or lie or do something like this, right? Now, I'm not trying to say he's a liar or any of that, but I'm questioning heavily the spin of the docuseries, number one because it was very heavy-handed towards his story, right? And it was, I mean, it was his story in this one. We will hear from her eventually, um, from Natalia. But my thought process in watching this and hearing this couple talking, we're like, we never thought she was that. I mean, look at her, she looks like a kid, she acts like a kid, is I'm just like, oh my God, did they seriously just cook this story up? But if you look through that lens, and again, this is just my opinion, I do not know for a fact, right? So do with that what you will and come to your own conclusion. If you look through the lens of the entire thing is made up, like they are completely cooking this up because they wanted to, they were like, we're done, we don't want her anymore, whatever. Um, I mean, my God, but it would also fall in line with look at the attention they're getting. Look at the attention. Because remember when you deal with some personality disorders, and again, I'm not diagnosing, I don't know. But, you know, when you deal with certain personality disorders, there's like this thing of negative attention is good attention, right? So, I mean, they're in the limelight right now, right? Like, this is major. Um, so, there's that. Let's watch another clip. The DePaul shared these photos of Natalia with their daughter, Mackenzie. As you can see here. That's a baby tooth. She lost a tooth and she's got another tooth coming in. Okay, now I'm just putting this picture up here because remember, if you've watched the docu-series and they showed that play date that Natalia did and it was this whole thing of like, look at how much older she is than the kid and whatnot. Okay, first of all, when I look at this picture, I'm like, these two girls, they look different facial structures, but remember, they have... Um, you know, this whatever each of them has, I'm not sure the official name of it at this point, and I don't want to try and guess at it and, you know, like offend somebody or something. Uh, but they each have this going on in some capacity. So, of course, there's going to be a little bit of different bone structure, that type thing. But I mean, I see very similarities in age wise here, right? Now, another thing that it makes me also look back on with the whole situation of that play date from the docuseries where the mother was like, we didn't get back together again. Imagine what Michael Barnett would have been like in that scenario. We, we're seeing his behavior, we're seeing this type of stuff. They could have set this up and told them a totally different age. 
it, it lied intentionally, but even then, just his behavior could have made someone be like, I, I, we're good. We're good. We want nothing to do with his family, and it had nothing to do with Natalia. Even though they're like, well, you could tell she was older and this, that, and the other. I mean, my God, it's like, what had she been through at that point, right? There's absolutely no telling. So let's continue. The DePauls say that's not even physically possible. If me and my wife tried to push an average height person into an electric fence, I don't think it would really go that well. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody struggling to walk and then pushing an average height woman? It's, it's ludicrous. Yes, ludicrous. And I mean, again, seeing them explain this standing there, it's like, yeah, I mean, you've seen Natalia walk, right? These are some of the things that when you start scraping beneath the surface, it's like, what? Now, this being said, I have no doubt, like I said, I am sure there's behavioral issues that went on, right? Number one, there's, there's just kids, take any issues out, there's kids being kids, right? Secondly, God only knows what she had gone through to get there. She had, We know she's been shuffled from home to home. Now, was it 30? I don't know. But we know she's been shuffled. So I think there's going to be definite abandonment issues, definitely stuff like that going on. And so I don't doubt that. Now, do I think it's to the level that the... Barnett's are saying absolutely not. I mean, this right here seems concocted. Now, also, if you've been like following the case, and you know the headline was she tr she put bleach in her coffee, talking about where um, Natalia, the parents, Michael and Christine are saying that she tried to kill her by putting like bleach or poison in there. Well, then like when you hear her, it's like oh, it's Windex or this or bleach. I don't know. But then the media and all this grabs a hold of it and makes it worse than it sounds and all that. Now, I am not trying to say if you call your kid, whoever, pouring Windex in your coffee, and you're like, what are you doing? They said, I'm trying to poison you. This is concerning, okay? I mean, this is, I'm not trying to just dismiss that, okay? I'm just trying to look at both sides of it, because the more I look at this, again, I just stand at this level where I'm like, I have no doubt that probably her age was smudged by a year or two, right? I have no doubt. You can't, you don't know what she was coming from over there, Ukraine. You, just, you don't know, right? I do not think she was a 20-something-year-old when they, she was adopted. I mean, according to the Barnetts, this girl would have been, like, I mean, a teenager in these pictures, right, with her daughter. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just not seeing that. And I think that it's a major headline. I think it's major this and that. Um, that being said, I have this question. If the adoption agency is saying, that's not true, that didn't happen, where and how did they get Natalia? I have lots of concerns over this. Could somebody in the comment section please point me somewhere that where we can get proof now of, well, then where did they get her? Right? Because, I mean, what they do, I mean, what happened? Where did they get this child? You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, and what do the other parents that dropped her off, have they come out with a statement? I've not been able to find one yet, but that does not mean that they haven't said, you know, bam. Here's my thing, too. I'm not, like, Facebook friending these people and getting all up in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I want to leave everybody alone. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know if there's people out there who have done this and gone down that to be like, look, you, you know, whatever. If you have, drop it in the comment section, okay? The Sofa Squad wants to know. Now, let's continue on with one more little thing before we stop. Okay, so I'm putting this picture up here. Now, this was that Dr. Phil interview. It was from a few years ago, and this is the new family that she is living with. Uh, and I just wanted to quickly talk about this very, very quickly. Uh, you know, they came up with this GoFundMe. I'll show where it's at as of the filming of this. But I want to read this excerpt from Daily Mail and uh, just review that and make some commentary on it. So here we go. Dailymail.com revealed that Natalia is now living with a Christian couple from Indiana and their five kids. Her new dad, 36-year-old Antoine Manns, was recently ordained as a pastor and lives in a former church parsonage with his wife Cynthia, 39, a former McDonald's manager. The devout couple are are aware of the questions swirling around the true age of their Ukrainian daughter, who is barely taller than a toddler because of the bone disorder. I'm not going to try and say that word, but you can see it on the screen. But images posted to social media make clear they treat the dimu diminutive female as a child, dressing her in color for her kid's clothes and captioning a photo of Natalia and a young playmate, sweetest best friends ever. So here's my thing with this. Um, and here's kind of still where I stand with this. 
I feel like everyone that I have seen, I'm not talking about this couple from the, the other couple that had her that was saying, hey, she's young or whatever. I don't know enough about their story. But I know, well, I've seen enough of other people to question the motivations of others, right? Um, I'm not, I still, I'm not sure how I feel about the, this couple having her. Um, now, remember, at this point, I mean, she's, you know, I mean, what is she, like, 19 or something like that? Like, by the, if you go by 2003. Okay. So, here's my thing. <laughs> With this right here, I was like, oh, okay, interesting. Okay, he just did this ordained as a pastor. They live at the parsonage, you know. Okay, got it. Uh, and then the whole thing about like, dressing her, you know, as a child and stuff like this. Now, here's one thing that I've seen a lot of people talking about in the comment sections of almost like, well, she knows the role to play in this, that, and the other, you know, and, and who knows? I mean, I do believe, especially, I mean, my God, if we go by, she was six, seven, eight years old, whatever, she went living on her own. This is somebody who's had to learn to survive, probably utilizing her situation as one of those, you know, mechanisms, right? And I mean, I don't blame her, right? Um, but then when you get into this type of stuff, like if there is ulterior motives by other people, it's just going to be a bad combo. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know, oh, Natalia's sw sw swindling and these people are. I don't know, right? I don't know any of that. Um, but something doesn't feel right about this. And I trust, I don't trust the motivations of a lot of the people that swooped into her life that we've seen in these situations. Now, I also stand by this. If Natalia is with this family and they're happy, meaning everybody, her and the family, even if it's like, well, they get this out of this and she gets this out of it, then great. Maybe she found what she was looking for, right? I mean, I don't know, but more power to her. She smiles. She seems happy. And just like any of us, she wants some form of a family. She wants some form of belonging. Now, before we finish the video, what I want to do is update you on the GoFundMe that the mother, uh, Christina, or I'm sorry, Cynthia, uh, uh, launched for Natalia. I'm going to put it up on the screen. And one thing I wanted to do, number one, was look at this picture that I have on the screen of them. It's like, I don't know if it's always been there on the GoFundMe, but I, I feel like this was, I didn't see it before. To me, she definitely looks like an older teenager here. I'm like, this is more like, you know, I see this is giving me, you know, 19, 20 year old vibes here, you know, which would be an appropriate age at this point, right? Um, now, first of all, their their number is up to 7,893 and that's as of today. Um, and again, you can pause to read the little thing in here, but essentially what they're asking for is money for a van for Natalia, like a, a, a wheelchair accessible van. Now, they also did throw in in there that uh, Natalia has always wanted to visit the Holy Land Jerusalem as this is our whole family's dream. Uh, Natalia recently went to a spine specialist and it goes on from there. Um, I do think it's interesting that they throw that part in there. I just will say that about that. Um, and there you go. So hopefully she can get what she needs. I mean, you know, we'll see. So that's it. Again, let me know if you're if you've been following this case with us here or elsewhere and you're just here or whatever. Let me know if you have anything to add to the discussion. Where did they get Natalia them from? If the agency says no, then where did she come from? Also, what is the former family saying? Because they could knock that out of the water real quick. No, yeah, we did meet them at someplace in Florida, right? Because I'm questioning how that process went down, right? The whole thing that he said of 24 hours since that doesn't sound, it sounds bizarre. It sounded like someone being sold in all honesty is what it sounded like the way he described it. It's like they came in a back door, dropped her off and we couldn't know anything. I mean, it sounded super shady. So if that's not how it went down. Well, then does the other family have anything to say about that? Like how it really went down? I mean, I'm very curious about that. Um, and did they have anything to say of like, okay, this is what was going on because if, you know, it does sound like there's some history of, um, negative behaviors and whatnot. But again, it depends on some of the situations where it's like, okay, well, what is somebody to gain from this? Uh, you know, one of the, the uh, mental hospitals she was at was like, oh, we had to send her home because she was coming on to adults and stuff like this. Well, she was legally 20 something then, right? As a child. Um, so what would that say about a hospital putting her in the adult ward? I mean, I get that she was legally a child at that point. I'm sorry, legally an adult at that point. But you see what I'm saying? where there's so many different things like that where it's like, uh, and you know what? I mean, if she was essayed through 
about her life, which, I mean, to me, I don't know if she was or not, um, but I think she definitely has suffered some severe trauma, then she's probably going to have some issues that would be say shocking to others right uh because we heard about that from some of the neighbors in the docuseries about this like kind of you know bizarre um very forward sexually type behavior um but again if this is a child that's been through that kind of trauma then that's not out of the ordinary for that even though you know obviously that's not good you know what i'm saying um so anyways that's it if you're still watching thank you drop sofas down in the comment section so roscoe can go sit on them uh and that's it let me know what you think down there i appreciate you watching and we'll soon be gathering around the old live chat here for our 55,000 sub celebration so be sure to look out for that it'll be at the end of this month june the 25th sunday evening uh, i'll put more out details out later so anyway that's it i'll talk to y'all soon